You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Four Gates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. It's another great day to be a Maryland lacrosse fan. The Terrapins take down the number three Princeton Tigers. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Bruce Posner. Bruce, what'd you see out there today? Wayne, you made a good point when we talked right after the game about Brett Makar. I've got a lot else to talk about, but Brett Makar today, I had to bring it up because I just got the stat sheet. Six ground balls and four calls turnovers. That's 10 possessions. One man was responsible for 10 possessions. That's almost incredible. But so maybe, you know, we got to look a little bit behind him and talk about the adjustment to Brian Rupel, a guy we interviewed uh, back in the Under Armour games. What a game for a freshman. I know Tillman kept it quiet. I'll give him credit. Nobody knew about it. Uh, Tony heard about it five minutes before. You and me had heard from uh, some of the pl uh, parents' players that Rupa was really impressive in uh, in practice. But here he is today, his first game ever, and he comes up with 14 saves and only allowed uh, five goals. And, you know, a couple of them were in garbage time when the score was, what, 9-2? Uh, to two? Although we can't say that after last year, but you didn't have that Cornell feeling today because Princeton really had trouble scoring. And I made a point when I was talking with Tony Wheeler, our uh, one of our experts. He was worried about this game, thought we were going to lose, thought we might lose. And I said, Tony, it's the same guys who played last year coming back. Their offense was the same, five out of six. And according to Tony, we double polled the two great midfielders, uh, Vardero and Hanley, and um, we let we let two, our two main poles take care of the attack, which they did almost perfectly, Ajax and Makar. Yeah. And and Princeton, they just could not score. I mean, they it was dead. They one couldn't goal. advance the ball. I mean, even on TV, even though I think there was a bit of a pro-Princeton TV to say the game. least, to say the least. They admitted that Princeton just could not advance the ball against Maryland. They just couldn't get into the attack zone on time and in good order. And they had very few unsettled opportunities going back the other way. Maryland's defense was on them for you know, 70 yards. Maryland was in their face. And it really disrupted their ability. They couldn't get free. They couldn't get any separation. So, you know, you can go from the top to bottom, Geppert. You can bring up Dante Trader. You can talk about Burlace. You just go down the whole list. Uh, of course, Tony pointed out what a great game Zapatello had. And uh, the Maryland defense does enough to win. And they called it championship defense. I have to agree with that. And when you have goalie play like Maryland put out today, even if there was a mistake or two, you know, Rupel probably stole a few there. I mean, outstanding skill level. Well, he was just 14 saves, and the, naturally the Princeton announcers were saying, well, they were all stick side. That's malarkey. That's absolute lamar lamar malarkey. I will say this. we got to talk about the offense today, and we keep complaining about it, but they put up 11 goals, and last week they put up 15. So I guess they must be doing something right, but this is the second week in a row we've had a team – come after us physically uh, a lot of times for no reason whatsoever. And he had a brutal stick check on them. And uh, I just don't understand it. And we talked about last year, what they tried to do to make our after that game was out of reach. And what would you think about uh, the attack on the goalie physically? Why doesn't a guy like that get thrown out of the game for doing that? It was totally... I don't think Go ahead. So looking at the replay, he didn't get hit that hard. He just shouldn't have hit him at all. I, I think what you're seeing is that now, if you're coming to play Maryland after having to go after Maryland the past few years, you're like, this is our year. We're really going to take it to Maryland. And you go through the game and your frustration as an, as an opponent builds, and it builds. And later in the game, you start doing more silly things. You'll lose a little bit of control. And Princeton ends up with seven penalties. Many of them, you might say, were uncalled for. Syracuse, it got a little out of control for Syracuse, ended up with nine penalties last week. And Maryland, talking about the offense, might not at this point be able to score from distance. 
on a regular basis. But when they run that cycle play from X and around and around the ball goes, and all of a sudden somebody breaks free, uh, a defender looks the wrong way, and Dylan Maltz walks right down the middle and scores, you appreciate that the Maryland offense is built to do what they do. They're scoring a lot of goals within five yards. And, yeah, last year they could kick it out, and Wisnaskis had hit a 20-yard laser. And, and that might not really be the strength of the offense right now. But Maryland, as the game wears on, that offense seems to wear you out. And they only had a few goals early on. Didn't do much in the first half. Sure, they had a lead. And then in the third quarter, they just, as you pointed out, Princeton changes goalies. Maryland scores seven goals in the third period. Correct. And you might wonder, you, you were talking about, was that a good strategy? So you've had an hour to think about it. Was that a good strategy? No, it wasn't because you had a very high goalie in the first half, and I know they're sharing the goalie role. But sometimes if a guy's real hot, you don't make that move. When when Dave Cottle shared the role with Brian Phipps and uh, – a guy by the name, his last name was White. I really forgot his first name, but uh, they shared it until it got to a couple games where if a guy had a good first half, boom, he stayed in the game, and it turned out to be Phipps. But uh, and, the, and then the last game against Notre Dame, it was the other guy who played the whole game because he had a great game against Notre Dame. It's 11 years ago, but I'm still talking about it. Uh, listen, Danny Maltz, four goals. Daniel Kelly, two goals. Jack Corse, three goals. Jack Corse is stepping up, isn't he? This is week yes. after week, and I think he even had a couple assists. I'm not positive, but I thought he was great. And uh, Dante Trader got in the assist game. Brandon Erickson got in two assists. Corse had one. Maltz had one, and Owen Murphy had one. And uh, I did like to see, after last week, my conversation with Tillman about we got to see uh, Weirman, who was 13 for 20, uh, we got to see Weirman take a shot, and he did today. And then if you notice, three minutes later, Murphy was wide open for one of his lasers that he put in the goalie stick. So in other words, when Murphy takes that shot, whether he makes it or not, one of those guys has to come out at him. They can't just let him go in there free. And they did. It didn't work. But uh, that's about the only thing that didn't work today. Maryland, uh, 11 goals on 45 shots. It's not going to make Tillman happy. That's 25%. 27 shots on goal. And Princeton had five goals on 38 shots, which is worse. And they only had 19 shots on goal. Ground balls, Maryland wins. Face-offs, I said. Uh, three for six on extra mans. And Terps were 16 for 18. They got beat twice on clears. But talk about Rupel. Your son was a goalie. You went through the agony. And my daughter was a goalie of having uh, a child as goalie. But is this kid got ice in his veins or what? Now, it was only his first game, and now they're going to study him. But today, he was special, Wayne. He, he didn't have a lot to do at first, so I think he got a chance to get in the game. Maryland, really, really tight defense, and Princeton had a lot of turnovers early on. And I think that the defense sort of funneled the ball where Maryland wanted the ball to go. Uh, but after that, there were a couple where the, the Princeton offensive player sort of walked to the circle and Ruppel just took it out of a stick. And, and that's really good goaltending. You, you anticipated where the play was coming from. You anticipated the shot angle and you just about stole the ball from, from your attacker. So it, it was pretty good. I, I'm sure that, yeah, maybe Rupel's parents were uh, a little apprehensive seeing their kid in goal, but you and I have seen him play before, and we talked last week that maybe it was at least at least give him a game or two. He was going to get in. If it wasn't today, it'd be against Albany, but somewhere in the line he was, for the most part, I'd say he was outstanding. Now, the road does not get any easier. Maryland beats the number three team in the country, but coming up in the next couple, was that That's the big dog? Harder. Was that the big dog? <laughs> that was the one known as the little dog. This one's Barky. The big one is Bitey, and okay. he's around here someplace. Uh, watch on the game. I'll, I'll tell you that. They had a lot to howl about. We will be back after this message and talk about your top 10 and the tough road ahead as uh, Maryland season rolls on, but it, it's a great day in Princeton, New Jersey. We'll be back in a moment. Hey, Rick Jackie. Who's your favorite number one term? 
Stefan Diggs, DJ Moore. Really? Now, come on, you know. Rakeem Jarrett, it's always been my favorite number one. Hey, Rock Jarrett, who's your number one? The Rick Jacklish Law Group. Why? Awesome trial results, unbelievable customer service, plus you've taken great care of my mom over the last 20 years. Just some of the reasons that the Jacklish Law Group has been voted the number one personal injury trial firm in the entire USA. If you're hurt, call the big dogs. 855-BIG-DOG-1. You probably started small and then grew and grew and grew some more. It's all so complicated now. And now you and your team need all of this technology to work together for you to be successful. Viner Forgates helps you make sense of it all. Our experts untangle the complexity of your system and help you plan a brighter future. For your now, your future, and your always, choose Viner Forgates. All right, uh, you ready to go? Let's go. You want Three. me to go? Okay. There we go. Three, two, one. Well, Bruce, you've been gaining some notoriety for putting together a top 10 that makes a little more sense than the writers do. And uh, one of your top 10, Loyola, uh, I guess they lost to Rutgers today, but the rest of them keep rolling on. What do you have in your top 10 update? Well, I haven't finished completely, but I'm moving Notre Dame to number one. You got to give them credit for a 15 to eight beat it, beat down of Georgetown. Uh, once again, you look at the three games they won and we'll have a much better judgment of Georgetown of uh, Notre Dame next week. You and me are shocked over Georgetown. I mean, I, I, for the life of me, I don't know what's going on and who knows, but the Ivies yeah. had a bad day today. They I did, mean, but what, let's just take a snapshot of Georgetown. They came into the NCAA tournament last year as the number two team right behind Maryland. Correct. They had Delaware. It was a home game. They lost that game. They haven't won since. Since being ranked second, they're 0-4. How do they turn this around? I don't know, but I love Kevin Warren, and I hope he does turn it around. I, I can't imagine. You know, we're not watching their games. I know you wanted to go today, but uh, we're not watching their games, so I can't really comment on it. But maybe it's the addition of Tucker Dernovic's not working. You know, Dernovic's a guy who demands the ball. He's a big dude, and he could score, but maybe that's why it's, uh, Syracuse let him go. But uh, I don't know, Wayne. I don't have that answer. But I was disappointed in Loyola because we both love the green. Uh, not as much as Maryland, obviously. But uh, they go to Rutgers, and we know Rutgers is a tough place to play, and they learned that the hard way. But uh, took their first loss today. But they'll stay in the top five, mainly because of their win over Maryland. Uh I, Notre Dame is number one. UVA stays at number two, and Maryland will stay at number three, mm -hmm. and we'll do the rest uh, maybe by Tuesday. But so, what do you make of you know Maryland played three today and they win? They play your number one or your number one next week, or oh, there's number two, right? Then at Albany, and then they play number one. So somewhere in the next four weeks, you play three, two, and one. From what you've seen this season, especially post Loyola. You think the Terps can come out of this with taking a victory in all of those? I don't know. I think it's going to be very tough to beat Notre Dame and and at UVA. It's going to be extremely tough. Look, it was tough today. Nobody, a lot of people didn't give us a chance, although it's funny. Uh, now that there's odds on everything in the world, I mean, you can you can bet on the, how fast the duck crosses the street, you know, if you want. But uh, Maryland was a two-and-a-half goal favorite, and people couldn't believe it. All right, that they were favored at Princeton. But like I said, it's the same Princeton offense that was there. And, you know, maybe, maybe, just maybe Tillman outcoached his, his opponent. All right, maybe, 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 uh, maybe, okay. And maybe Luke Weirman, 13 and 7 on the faceoffs, helped. And maybe their calm, conditioning way of playing is not the beat em up, brutal game that Princeton tried. Again and again and again. Did it work? No, it didn't Not work. Today it didn't work in Connecticut. What right. do you make of the growth of Dante Trader? I know we talked at a couple shaky minutes early in the season, but right now, boy, he's really picked up. He is he's now a really good short stick defender. You saw him taking on 19 one-on-one, -on -one, and he did a great job. And 
Uh, his clearing of the ball is good. His shot today wasn't too great, but I wanted him to take it. Keep shooting. You know, 45 shots. One of these days, 20 of them are going to go in. All right. And, you know, had they had a second half against this goalie, which we still don't understand why he took him out, uh, it might have been different. But uh, let's look elsewhere real quick. Hopkins won again. They beat Utah. It's a good win for them. Uh, Penn lost. All right. Penn State beat Yale 14 to yeah. 12, I believe. I mean, the Ivies had a bad day, but that happens sometimes because they start practice much later. And I don't think they're in their groove until the end of the season. So we might face Princeton again, or we might face, uh, you know, Penn or Cornell or wherever in the playoffs. But it's just a feeling I have about their the reasoning that they start so cold. I know last year Princeton's first game was against Maryland, and that was a mistake. They got a couple games in this year beforehand. Uh, I wasn't. I don't know much about Manhattan, but they struggled against Manhattan. They only beat them fourteen to nine, and they were so down at halftime. We talked uh, a little bit about the schedule. How do you schedule going forward? You asked me if you think Maryland's going to keep uh, Loyola on the schedule. Are they going to keep Syracuse on the schedule? Are they going to keep Princeton? You know, when you look out and, and talk to Tillman. And you know all the other teams that he really does want to play. You brought up Georgetown a moment ago. Terps had played Yale for a long time. They haven't played Yale in a while. There, there's other used to play Penn. Haven't played Penn in a bit. Do you think you know more about this than I do? Is it time to sort of roll these opponents into to, uh, another series? I think that games? yeah. I, I think that uh, you can't play the same teams every year because it's just boring. You know what I mean? I think he's going to renew with Danowski and Duke. I think for whatever reason he wants to do that. He did. He mentioned that one time that Duke might be on the forefront, and I think Georgetown's on the forefront. But uh, he won't play a team that isn't highly rated. He just won't. You know, the the lowest he dropped this year was Richmond. Richmond almost, I mean, they were, they were an excellent team last year, and they're, I think they're back in the top 20. So uh, you look at their schedule, and he just doesn't have a week off, and that's he just feels the team's much better that way, and it's true. A loss today to Princeton would not have been the end of the season for Maryland because they get another crack next week at a great team, and that's how he's going to do I don't think, I'm not sure if he'll cut Notre Dame. I don't know because it seems like Notre Dame was the only ACC team that stepped up and played us besides Carolina when like all of a sudden Maryland was verboten for moving to uh, the big, uh, the hey, big, we're 10. big 10 school now. Yeah. I like playing Notre Dame. I, I, I love not liking Notre Dame. That's a huge game for me. W one other scheduling note, a lot of these other teams, even Hopkins plays on Tuesday. Loyal plays on a Tuesday or Wednesday, Maryland, just doesn't. Is that because of TV, or is that just the way you think Tillman wants to schedule? He doesn't it? believe in it. He doesn't believe in it. He doesn't, you know, like you saw what happened to Hopkins on Tuesday against Carolina after playing a brutal Georgetown game. Tillman doesn't play teams like, you know who schedules a Tuesday game? A team that plays Albany on Saturday, and then they take Manhattan on Tuesday. Okay. Do you think Princeton would schedule a Tuesday game after Maryland? All right. No. I don't think so. So, and Maryland doesn't play this guy. That's no knock to Albany because Albany has beat us when, the, you know, when they had uh, Connor, uh, Connor, I can't think of his last name. He was great. And the Thompson brothers, it wasn't like right. we rolled them. And but, Nana Coke. I mean, they had some guys. Right. He, he forced, he played a couple midweek games. Uh, and I just don't think he likes them. He thinks they cause injury. They cause, you know, interfering with studies, interfering with uh, everything else. And, he, look, Tillman does what he wants. He's he a does. standard bearer, man. And, and he wins. And right. He, when you say uh, he might have outcoached almost, when you really study what Maryland does and you see the wrinkles they put in to overcome what what the other teams have on film and how they change things up slightly and all of a sudden it reignites the offense and reinforces the defense, uh, it just goes back to why Tillman is probably the, the best coach out there and he might be one of the best coaches in men's sports at any level for any sport he's Wayne really while we got really since, uh, this is our longest post game show ever I think let's talk about Maryland Northwestern tomorrow and uh, Boo Booey and Chase Aldige and the whole crew what a classic that's going to be yeah, I mean it's so much on the line all right. Uh, 
that game is so important for Maryland as far as look, Maryland's in the tournament, but as far as seeding goes and ranking goes, it's really our last top notch opponent we play. Unfortunately, we got to go to that snake pit on the last game of the year called Penn State, where we haven't had too much success. But we got Ohio State on Wednesday. But tomorrow's the game because if if the Terps win, they will be in second place. Now, it might well, just be look, for a day or two, but they will be in second place. Northwestern had a chance to separate themselves, and they could not close out the Illini. I think that was Tuesday night. Uh, so they had a chance to get ahead. Look, Maryland lost at Nebraska, and it sets up another sellout. And geez, first time Maryland can go undefeated at home in the Big Ten. So you got that, and it's senior day. And I'm not telling you that some of these guys can't come back, but chances are Scott, Hart, Jameer Young, this is probably the last game. Uh, Donald Carey, Patrick Emelian. You know, they haven't been here for a long time, but you get this deep in the season, they start to win. You start to really pay attention. So, so what's the chant we're going to hear tomorrow? You know what it is. Uh, one well, we, one we, more we, year. One more year. Right. Hey, we ahead. have to do it playing the Dookie. And I actually like what Collins has done at, at Northwestern. And they have been fun to watch. And he's been – a few times we've tried to interview him. He's been very gracious with his time. And I'm looking forward to talking to him about coming back to College Park to actually play a big game. So we don't get to play Duke but we do get to play a Dukey tomorrow. And of course, I think Maryland's going to win. They've been unbeaten in the home. They get, they score better at home. Uh, I'm not sure they defend better because they're a really great defensive team, but they do get a lot of free throws at home, Bruce. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, Doug Collins, look, he'll get, he'll get the treatment tomorrow from the fans always has. But when we get to meet him and talk to him, he's really a good guy. All right. And you can see why the players, you know, really, you know, go through a wall for him. And he's done an absolutely fantastic in a place. It's not that easy to recruit, not that easy to uh, get people to go there in the upper North where uh, a good day, the temperature is zero, but uh, here's the bottom line though. All right. He's done a great job. Willard has done. There's a battle. Who's the coach of the year. I'm not sure who they might give it to Matt Painter. I don't know, but that doesn't mean anything, but Willard, is we'll have be ready for this game and I can't wait. I just can't wait. Be there by eleven thirty for everybody listening out there. I haven't figured out why yet. Or probably because of senior day. But yes. uh I got a notice from Maryland to get there at eleven thirty. Mm-hmm. And I got a notice I was just texting before this the SID about just how many media people are coming out and how many photographers and uh, it, it's really caught on. Maryland basketball, you said it on one of the post-game shows when we beat Purdue, it's back. And There's no doubt. We talked about how hard it would be to sell this building out, and maybe that day is gone, and now we sold out three of the last four games. I, I just love it. Hey, and I love today beating Princeton and being 3-1 and one now. And You know, Wayne, when you analyze it, 33% of the season's done. Yeah. It's not a long season. 12 yeah. games, four games are finished. And uh, would you have taken three and one at this point with our schedule? I think I would have. I probably would have figured they would have lost one game out of the eight non-conference games. But let, let's let's seven. quickly go through this. Seven. You got, well, you got Notre Dame, seven. You got Notre Dame, Albany, and Virginia left. And then you start up the Big Ten. Then the real so, play starts because it's all yeah. about what happens in the Big Ten. And, uh, you know, Maryland will – Check the, check the line on the teams that they played ability-wise. I don't know what Syracuse is doing today. They were playing North Carolina. It's hard to say, well, let's root for Syracuse. Uh, but uh, we got to root for Syracuse. I but it was a great do. day. I'll let you wrap it up. We thank Viner Four Gates and the big dog law firm, Rick Jacklich. And, and we will up, see Wayne. them. Uh, yes, we will see all of you after the Northwestern game live from the court at Xfinity Center tomorrow, which will be Sunday. For Bruce Posner, I'm Wayne Viner. Thanks to Tony Wheeler for chipping in some of that information before we get on the air. We will see you tomorrow.